Hello and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are Martin Paneff, Chief Account Executive and Trading Analyst, GDMFX. Welcome to today's European Session Market Outlook. As usual, starting with a brief coverage of the main markets out there, North American markets first. NASDAQ, yesterday 70 points range up, uh, but has erased half of it during the Asian session. The Dow moved up by 250 points yesterday with a 70 points correction during the night. U.S. labor market conditions reports uh, came out 1.1 versus 1.4 previous. Yesterday, Fed's vice chairman, Stanley Fisher, expressed his uh, concerns over low inflation, uh, but also recognized that the improvements in the labor market are there. Uh, the spotlight then turned to Atlanta Fed president, uh, Dennis Lockhart, who said that the point of lift off is close and that he is um, very disposed to a September rate hike. Uh, the Washington Street Journal uh, Fed watcher, though, um, Jon Hilsenrath, um, said that inflation expectations could affect the Fed rate hike schedule. A little bit negative there. Top three events on the uh, calendar agenda for the U.S. today, namely Red Bull Index reports, wholesale inventories, and unit labor costs, along with the non-farm productivity, uh, productivity reports. Housing starts for the Canadian property market is due today. European markets, the French CAC 40 has managed to gain some strength uh, at the end of the day uh, yesterday with 75 points range, closed on a uh, 10 points positive, a reminder that the index is currently uh, at seven years high. The German DAX 30 did its regular um, a little bit over 200 points move, but closed on a positive 80 points. French um, uh, BOF business sentiment unchanged at 98.8 versus 99 expected and the Eurozone Centix investor confidence unchanged at um, 18.5 versus 20.3 expected. Earlier this morning, the German wholesale prices index came positive as the year-on-year uh, -year reading was as expected and the month-on-month -month report came uh, 0 0.1 from negative 0 0.2 previous. Later today, the ZEU economic reports are due to show um, current situation and the economic sentiment. The same report is due for the European zone as well. Moving along to the uh, British market, starting with the FTSE 100, which moved up to a total of nine points yesterday, uh, closed very near to 6,700 mark. BRC retail sales monitor year on year for July, actual 1.2% expected to be one and previous was 1.8. Yesterday, the sterling regained some strength um, against uh, the major pairs, all except for the loony, uh, which was held by the positive retail sales monitor, uh, which was again, a little bit better than expected. Uh, pound dollar moved 10 points up yesterday, 15 points range. Uh, versus the yen, the move was 17 points up, 20 points range. Uh, the pound versus the Aussie, 9 points up yesterday, 17 points range, 27 points up today already. Uh, the pound versus the loonie, 8 points down yesterday, 20 points range, 8 points down as we speak already for, um, for today. Uh, the pound versus the uh, New Zealand currency moved 12 points up yesterday out of 25 points range, 23 points up already today. Uh, the pound versus the Suisse, 10 points up yesterday, 17 points range, um, pretty much sideways move as we speak. Moving to the most interesting events, the Asian Pacific markets. Uh, yesterday, the money supply year on year came out 1.6% better than the expectations, now at 13.3%. New loans came out twice better than the expectations. Uh, the big move, though, was the uh, China Central Bank cut uh, uh, the yuan's daily fixing rate by a record 1.9%, sending the currency lower. Uh, today, after the uh, IMF delayed last week a decision to endorse um, its reserve currency, the move was a one-time adjustment. The uh, central bank said in a statement, adding that it will strengthen the market's uh, role in the fixing uh, and will promote the uh, convergence of the um, offshore uh, and onshore rates. The People's Bank of China had kept the yuan broadly stable against the dollar since March to encourage greater global usage in the push 
uh, for official reserve status at the International Money Fund. Uh, China has been uh, pushing for Yuan to join the dollar, euro, yen and pound in the basket of currencies that uh, make up the fund's special drawing rights. The central bank took the step with uh, an eye toward making the Yuan's value more market-based. The midpoint or fixing uh, will now be based on how the Yuan closes in the previous trading session. Um, until now, the fixing had been entirely determined by the central bank itself. A strong yuan, though, has put pressure on China's exports. Um, the nation's overseas shipments fell 8.3% uh, from a year earlier. Uh, in dollar terms of, uh, uh, in July, well below the estimate of 1.5% decline. Asian markets uh, are mostly trading in the negative territory. Uh, the Nikkei uh, losing 0.66%. Uh, Chinese stocks were mixed as uh, markets assessed the latest news from the People Bank of China. For today, uh, in Japan, domestic corporate goods price index year on year and month on month. We also have the Bank of Japan monetary policy meeting minutes published. Tomorrow, um, we're going to see the uh, retail sales reports in China year on year and also the year on year report on the industrial production reports. Uh, for Japan, machinery orders year on year, foreign bonds and foreign investment in Japan stocks. Uh, those are all events for tomorrow. Um, of course, I wanted to include something a little bit more interesting. By the end of the week, uh, we also have the foreign direct investment in China reading. Uh, and uh, moving to the Pacifics, uh, yesterday, the New Zealand electronic card retail sales uh, report month on month, 0.4% down from 0.4% uh, fine, but year on year 5.6% up from 5 The depreciation in the yuan exchange rate has negative uh, repercussion uh, for the Australian economy as Chinese companies will have less purchasing power. After the depreciation data came out, the Aussie was in supply uh, as the bears took over in a selling fashion. Tomorrow, for the New Zealand dollar business PMI and Royal Bank of Australia Deputy Governor Mr. Lowe will have a speech. Uh, Westpac Consumer Confidence Report is due as well. On the commodities front, um, starting with the S&P 500 index, which had a range of almost 30 points yesterday, ended on a positive at uh, 2090 at the moment. Uh, the index, the S&P 500 composite, uh, soared by more than 1% as crude prices rallied on Monday after touching down to six-year lows in overnight trading. Gold surged on Monday, uh, experiencing its strongest one-day move in nearly two months amid dovish commands from a prominent Federal Reserve official. Gold had a range of uh, $19 uh, trading over the 1,100 mark. Oil jumped almost 4% on Monday after a rally in the U.S. gasoline and diesel due to a refinery outage helped crude futures advance from multi-month lows. The oil prices fell in early Asia um, today with a focus on weak, uh, weekly data points ahead in the U.S. on the, on the supply mark. Oil fell uh, this morning amid a broader commodity decline as China's central bank uh, devalued its currency, making imports of raw materials more expensive in the world's biggest consumer of metals and energy. The WTI had $1.40 range yesterday at $44.60 as we speak. That's all for me from today. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a successful trading day. Cheers. Bye-bye.